and strategies and tools I'm going to talk about, they're not only relevant for the virtual world, uh, which is now, but going forward, uh, when uh, the world goes to normal, I'm hoping that we will start going to offices or schools, and that's when we will be able to use these uh, structures and these uh, strategies even more. So uh, before I start, how many of you think, what do you think when you're in front of audience or when you have to speak in public or uh, when you have to speak to give a speech? What, what is your thought? Yeah. Please. So uh, as you will see, you would have these kind of feelings which I've written on the list. This is not an exhaustive list, but a lot of us go through this. You know, uh, you might say, I might stammer or I'm not good enough. Or what if I freeze? What if I forget? All these things happen to all of us. And 73% of the world goes through these feelings. So we are in the majority, guys. We all feel these uh, emotions one, at one point or another. So it's go good to be scared because then that means we practice more or we prepare more for what is to come, where we have to give speech. Uh, things we will focus on presenting virtually, how to be confident, ways to overcome fear. And if we have time, we'll do structure your speech so that we are confident when we are speaking. So presentation skills are becoming more important because of uh, COVID and this new normal. So we have to do everything online. Earlier, what we could ju just gone and told our boss, now we have to present in a certain manner. So my question to you guys, there are three things, words, the presentation which you have to put together, the research you do, tone of voice, body language and facial expression. How much weightage do you generally give when you are writing down your presentation or researching on your presentation? And um, there is this uh, researcher, Albert Mehrabia, he is the one who came up with this, that 7% is words, 38% is tone of voice, and 55% is body language. So can you imagine that 93% is your non-verbal communication? It's not what you say, but how you say it. So if you are spending out of 10 days, let's say, seven or eight days in researching and only two days in body language and tone of voice, you will not be able to get give your audience justice because you will be saying things which you have researched, but they're not coming out the way you have done the research. So please do give a lot of focus on your presentation delivery. That is the most important thing. Research is well, good, you did it. But at the end of the day, it's how you're delivering the research, right? Okay, so now here are the golden rules of speech. Speak at a measured speed. So I have five golden rules of speech. Speak at a measured speed. Speed. So a lot of us uh, talk very fast. It can be because either we are nervous or we are excited or uh, we are so passionate that we want to tell everything we have in our, ourselves, right? Or sometimes you are so slow and that can again be because we are nervous or we are thinking and formulating our thoughts. So both of the extremes are not good. Sometimes you have to go to one extreme to show your passion, but trying to come in between is what we have to do all the time. And that happens when you constantly keep reminding yourself. When I was young, I was told so many times by my, my dad, my teachers, to speak slow. And since then, I have been practicing that. Even now, I sometimes go very fast when I'm excited or something I know well. But that is what we have to curb. Body language. So I'll talk about the elements of body language and how we can control each of the body language elements to make ourselves powerful. Word choice and vocabulary is what you say. It's how you draft your speech, your opinion that everybody feels 
that you are saying something which is of value, which is of worth to them. And engage your audience. So engagement is when the audience is listening to you. The audience is connected. So that connection is even bigger than engagement because the audience is understanding where you're coming from, what you're actually trying to say. And my last and the most favorite is practice, practice, practice. There is no shortcut to giving a good speech. Even now, when I was uh, uh, working for this uh, speech, which I'm, going to, I'm giving, you, uh, giving in front of you today, I have uh, practiced so many times. And every time I was like, okay, you know what? Maybe I should, be, should work on this more so that I can give more to my audience. And um, let me know how I have succeeded or not succeeded in my practice. So body language has six elements. First is eye contact. So this is a lot of times uh, you would have seen that somebody's talking to you and he or she is looking at his phone, fidgeting with his phone or, uh, you know, browsing or looking somewhere else. That's a disrespect. So when you're talking to somebody, please look and you know to, to what they're saying look at look at them so that they feel that you know it's a mutual respect and in online please look at the screen you can't keep looking on the camera it is very um, discomforting but if you look at the screen in general you have covered pretty much your audience hand gesture so when i say this what does this mean what does this imply to you yeah little so what if i said i have a lot of chocolate would that showcase that this is what i'm trying to say no so your hand gesture and what you're saying should be able to match so when you say i have a lot of chocolate you would be able to kind of imagine that she really is saying this truth. Yeah? Okay, head movement. So sometimes we all are not in the mood to listen to what our speaker is saying, what the Zoom call is all about, about the meetings, what our teachers are saying or our bosses are saying. And we are sometimes looking somewhere or our head is like this or like this. That is again a part of body language and we need to focus on that. It should be something which gives that speaker that feel that you know you're looking at them and your attention is there, your undivided attention is there. Body posture and stance. So there is something called power posture. When you are not slouching, you are standing straight and your shoulders are rolled back it gives that posture and your feet are parallel to your uh, shoulder. They are not far wide or they're not closed. That is a power posture. And when you have that, when you're talking to somebody, it instantly gives you, gives you a lot of strength within and you are on a solid footing. And the person who's looking at you also feels that you are powerful. And of course, uh, facial expressions, so you can be angry and trying to hide it, but it will show with you by your face. So if you're angry at somebody and you just want, you're trying to say something polite, your face is going to show that. So it is all practice. With practice, you will all be able to get this. You will all be able to get it right. If I'm angry, but I want to not show it, if I keep practicing, it will get better and smiling appropriately. So just smiling all the time is make you look, will make you look fake. So don't do that. Use smile in a manner when, you, when somebody is coming towards you, please do smile because that's going to make that person feel that he or she is welcoming. You, you are welcoming them and they, are, they, they feel good about it. And smiling also that hormone which is inside you that helps you to feel good yourself. Have you ever seen that, you know, you randomly smile at somebody sometimes 
and the person smiles back. It just makes you feel good, right? Those endorphins and within you, you be like, wow, this is good. So if you are out in your community or out uh, somewhere, even looking at the person who's cleaning the house or cleaning your office or cleaning the space, uh, the place where you're walking, if you just smile at them and they smile back, it just feels good. Has anybody experienced that ever? Yeah, that happens to me a lot. Sometimes, especially the, on the days when I am feeling down or I feel, oh my God, I'm stressed. Then I go out for a walk and I just randomly smile at people. And then I'm like, wow, I am relaxing myself. So please do smile. And when you are doing a presentation, if you can have a pleasant face and not a stressed face with you know, wrinkles all over, <laughs> it will help you to calm down and uh, give a presentation in a genuine way. And all this has to be authentic. You have to start doing it. Of course, um, as we say, fake it till you make it, that's true. Because you are always practicing and practice until you start reaching that point that you are automatically doing that. You're automatically smiling. You're automatically making eye contact. So um, there are a few, you know, generally I make this, uh, uh, this thing to, uh, this thing I do with my uh, audience live, but since you guys are on your own screens, uh, I'll just tell you. So when you're sitting like this, how many of you do that? When you're sitting in your class or in your office and your boss or your teacher is speaking and you're sitting like this or like this, well, I have seen a lot of people doing that and that's showing I am bored. If you're interested, this is one way, but this very, very quietly and calmly starts happening like this. So try not to sit like this also. Keep your hands away from your face. Let them see your face. And most importantly, please keep your video cameras on because if, especially if it's a smaller setting, the speaker gets energy seeing you guys. When he sees us, he or she feels, okay, you know what? They're able to understand me or should I change it so that I can do something better for them? So if the video cameras are on, it helps the speaker. When you're playing with your hair or you know, just touching, fiddling uh, with your hair or your face, it is again a sign of bored, boredom. So please don't do that. And when you're talking to somebody, keeping, I mean, I'm sure this is something that you all would have known, but we still do it because it's a very natural reaction for all of us to uh, go talk like this because we don't know what to do with our hands. So either keep your hands in the pocket or keep your hands like this down, or you can hold a pencil or something which will help you Hold a copy, it will help you to uh, talk to anybody. So that's, that's a lot of time that is uh, when you are uh, in person, maybe not in the virtual sessions, but this really helps. So if you even if you're sitting, don't sit like this. This is just showing I am closed to what you are saying to me. Keep your hands away. Other thing, when somebody is fiddling with his cuff, and it happens to a lot of us. We, we generally think, okay, we're listening and we are you know, fiddling with our cuff. That is also showing that you're agitated or you're anxious about something, you're thinking about something else. So try not to do that. If you're relaxed, you will not be fiddling with your cuff. Okay, the next thing is posture. So posture, you have to be straight. Slouchy post posture shows you're not confident or you want to actually shrink and so that nobody sees you. Well, that's not something which you actually want to convey. You want to convey that you're a strong person, you're powerful and you are not insecure. So when somebody looks at you who's standing straight with your shoulders rolled, that's confidence. If you're slouching, even sitting for that matter, it's not only about standing. When you're sitting, it happens to, again, you know, you're listening to us, uh, to, to, the, or to the speaker, 
and you're like interested, but suddenly your shoulder starts slouching. So remind yourself, go back, look confident. And if you want to see if your posture is straight or not, uh, put your back against the wall and you will see that your shoulders and your hip should be touching the wall. And that's when you'll know that you are standing straight. Please do try it after this class. You will actually see the difference in how you're standing. Okay, present virtually and look professional. This, this is a time when lots of people make mistakes and I would like to work on these things with you all. Please do tell us later, uh, write in Enlightened Sapiens uh, Insta handle, whether this helped you or not. So in logistics, first, don't wear black. It just consumes you. Try to wear a neutral color, or even if you're wearing a bright color, keep it plain. If it, there's a lot of uh, print going on, it makes it very difficult for the audience to engage with you. Remember that the room is well lit. There is enough light to show, see your face. Third thing, um, whenever you have your camera on, make sure your background is clean. It's not cluttered. Because that again makes you feel um, as if you know, lots of things are going on. So audience can't focus on you. They get distracted. If you can't have a clean, uh, if you can't have a quiet room, if you can't have a clean background, use Zoom's virtual background. That's the easiest way. But please don't use a beach background if you're not at the beach or you're not talking about vacation or travel. <laughs> Lots of times it has happened with a professional uh, presentation going on and somebody has a beach virtual background. Come on, don't make us feel jealous. Be professional. And check the speed of your speech. So you have to continuously remind yourself if you are the one who speaks fast, please remind yourself to speak slow. It's, no, it's not to say that don't speak with enthusiasm. You have to use that, but your speech should be slow. You can use fast speech some places in some places, but in most of the places, it should be at a speed that the other person can understand you. And pause before a major point you have something very important to say, pause. Because then the audience is like, oh, what happened? If they have gone into their realm of thinking, they'll all come back. Because that's when they're like, okay, it seems like something is important coming, something important is coming. Or they'll feel, oh, maybe she stopped. What is the problem? So they all come back. And if your speech is a prepared speech, do not use mm, uh, uh, because that again irritates the audience. They, it irritates their mindset. What is happening? Don't use that. Sometimes we all have to pause and think what we want to say and the audience understands it. So just stop and think and then speak. Practice the difficult words. So there are lots of words even till now I am unable to pronounce. So if your speech has them, please practice them because that's what is going to make you look again professional. A trick which I do is a lot of times I read any passage from any book or if I'm reading some article, then I read it aloud. That helps me to hone my speech. It tells me exactly where I should be rolling my tongue and it makes it easier for me to read whenever I want to. And even in my talking, it makes it easier. And last two, the, all the audiences who are looking at you, they want you to succeed. At the end of the day, you are here to listen to me for one hour. That's a lot of time in somebody's uh, 24 hours. Yeah. So that means that you actually want to listen to something which, from which you will gather something, which will tell you that, oh, okay, you know, today I learned this new thing. Because we as human beings always want to make ourselves better, develop ourselves. So this audience is looking that you should be succeeding in whatever you're doing. 
So don't feel that the audience will make laugh, will, will laugh at you or will make fun of you. No. Of course, you know, you have your friends who will laugh at you just for the sake of it. But that's fine. There are also the friends who will encourage you. And in the end, smile and do not rush off. Once you've finished your presentation, take all the adulation you're getting from the audience, all that claps you're getting from the audience. Enjoy that. Enjoy the fruit of all the hard work you've done. So summing up it, summing this whole body language, the things, keep it short. Stand while presenting. A lot of people to these days are sitting, which is fine. But if you are standing, you know, the lot of, it is, it helps you to breathe from your diaphragm. So that gives it a lot of energy. And that energy comes out uh, in, in, in the way of how you speak. So please do stand out if you want to make it more effective. You will see the difference because you're breathing from your stomach, from your diaphragm, and it, it gives a better feel to your presentation, to you. And involve your audience. So, you know, asking them questions or ideas from them, involving them would give you a lot of freedom because the audience would want to listen to you and use your voice to communicate passion and energy. And of course, speaking at a measured space, maintaining eye contact. How many of you think that correct posture vis-a-vis -vis eye contact, what do you think irritates you more or makes you listen to the, to the speaker more? Have you ever felt that the speaker is talking and uh, he's, he or she is not looking at you? In everyone's, written eye, everyone's written eye contact. Yeah. Eye, con eye contact, okay. eye contact, eye contact. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. So eye contact is the first thing and it is easy to handle, especially in the virtual world because you have to look in the camera. And posture, please, night now, roll your shoulders back, sit straight. You will feel the difference. And whenever you think you're slouching, come back. Correct your posture. You will, so let's say if you're in the school, I, uh, I see that there are lots of young adults. So if you're in school or if you're in your office, if your boss or your teachers are looking at you, if you roll your shoulders back and sit straight, it gives that feeling that yes, that person is in control.